Hello, my name's Penelope Gordon, and I've written a book, 800 Days in Doha. I'm a doctor by profession, and you might ask, why does a doctor with 35 years experience in the NHS suddenly up sticks and go and work in the Middle East? Let me read a bit from the introduction, just to set the scene. Why would anyone want to go and work in Qatar? asked one of our friends. Because we've been headhunted, I said. OK, said another. But why you, Penny? What do you know about the Middle East? Of course, I knew nothing. But I also knew that it was my husband, Lionel, who they'd really been after. Retiring Rear Admiral, Head of the Naval Medical Service, the options were out there and they had been keen to recruit him. Come and have lunch, Admiral, said the Savile Row-suited headhunter. From the safety of the oak-panelled dining room in a London club, he had extolled the virtues of life in the small Arab state of Qatar. You'll love it. Good weather, your own pool, marble everywhere. Very safe. No Arab spring, because they don't need it. Strong persuasion, but Lionel had remained unconvinced. Well, I'll think about it and discuss it with Penny, he'd said. But you know, she's also a doctor, a senior player in her hospital. No problem. Have her send us her CV. They'll find her a job too. Nothing to lose. I'd sent in my CV and we'd waited. In fact, we'd almost forgotten about it. We'd begun to talk about sailing the boat to distant lands and having a grown-up gap year or two. Then the phone call had come. Lionel, they want Penny. Don't worry, they'll find something for you as well. A couple of visits to the Middle East and we were on. Two job offers, both well paid, with a house included. After a summer sailing in home waters, we flew to Doha on 11th of September, 2012. So what did we find when we got there? What did I write about? in my 800 days. Let me just read a little vignette about an international conference that was being held in Doha. Delegates from all over the Gulf are flocking to the conference centre, which is a splendid futuristic building with huge lobbies, grand lecture halls and more intimate wood panelled areas for small group working. I drive past the university and follow the signs to the VIP parking. The uniformed security guard has a list, but doesn't check me, simply handing over a VIP pass and directing me to the special car park. Lionel is less lucky and undergoes laborious checking procedures before being let through. Sometimes it helps to be a blonde Western woman with a big smile. I am scheduled to chair a few sessions, but first we have the opening ceremony. As usual, very, very important people, VVIPs, have designated seats in the front row, while simple VIPs have to be content with rows two or three. Inevitably, the front row is a sea of white thobes and gutras with an occasional grey suit. I appear to have been forgotten, so my success with the VIP parking is short-lived. I bump into a cashery female consultant colleague who offers me a seat next to her, where we have a good vantage point of the great and good, most of whom she knows anyway. She is much younger than me and very beautiful, with heavily made up eyes and fingers and wrists dripping with diamonds. I spy a hint of genuine poochy print beneath her black abeah and the official photographer spends most of his time photographing us both together while ignoring important Arabs and American academics. The second day, I bump into my new best friend again in one of my sessions. She is wearing a new abeah, which is the customary black, but adorned with lines of biker jacket studs along the sleeves and on the veil. She is wearing vertiginous heels and sporting a designer handbag. The effect is rock chick meets punk meets the Middle East. She looks stunning, 
and she knows it. We are chatted up by a young man from a neighbouring country as we leave the lecture theatre. He wants to impress me because he thinks I might be important, but he is mesmerised by her, especially when he discovers that she is a surgeon. She simply looks down her long aquiline nose at him and he visibly crumbles. He hasn't a chance. So, if you want to hear more about our adventures and experiences in the Middle East, please buy my book, 800 Days in Doha, published by Chaplin Books, and the proceeds of the book go to the excellent charity, St John.